Here you see a screenshot of the newly launched Better Scientific software site. This site is focused on being a, a general hub for the community to collaboratively share information about topics related to scientific software, specifically focusing on improving the quality of scientific software. And by that, we mean including, including the productivity of the people who write the software, that is the software developers, scientific researchers. And we also are concerned about improving the sustain sustainability of our software artifacts, that is the codes that we write. These, these often need a, a very long lifetime. So why is it important to, to focus on this now? Well, computational science and engineering is, as we know, pivotal in, in scientific research. It's emerged as a peer with theoretical and experimental research. And of course, the way we actually collaborate in computational science and engineering is through software. Software is the means by which we encapsulate expertise developed by different different groups, different people, who represent input across many disciplines, including mathematics, statistics, computer science, domain-specific areas of science and engineering, data analytics, uh, and, and even more. So while our software is becoming extremely complex, and our, our software is now being asked to address multi-physics and multi-scale modeling, the combination of coupling with data analytics. Uh, and as we're moving toward extreme scale computing, we have more resources to do even, even more, even larger and more complicated models. Um, we find that our software really needs to, to be able to keep up with these increasing demands. Um, however, software oftentimes does not get the focused attention that it deserves. Oftentimes, software is considered uh, on the side behind the scenes as our communities are working towards scientific discoveries. And we believe with many other people in the international community that more attention needs to be focused on helping to improve the quality of our software and to improve the collaborations among our computational science and engineering researchers who are working on software. So this site is intended as a community collaborative vehicle to, to bring together diverse people from throughout, uh, throughout the community internationally to collaborate on these topics. So we are intending the Better Scientific Software site to be a, a place where people can disseminate information and experiences that they have found useful in their own work and also can learn from other people who are also sharing information about tools, techniques, and other resources. So our goals are not only to share this information, but also to raise awareness about the importance of good software practices as we're working on, on scientific and research topics that involve software, and to raise importance about the increasing challenges that are being faced as we work towards next generation predictive mo modeling particularly much of working toward extreme scale computing in many cases. Although the intent of this information exchange at this site is, is really to serve people who are working across all spectrums of computing, from laptops to workstations through intermediate clusters through extreme scales. We find that we face many similar challenges as we're working on scientific software to do research discovery. So our goal is for this site to enable people to find information about particular scientific software topics, and also to encourage the community to propose to participate in the site. That is, to propose to curate or create new content based on their own experiences. And as we move forward in the presentation, we'll explain just how, how that can happen using our back-end GitHub repository and standard GitHub tools and processes. The, thought, the site officially launched just recently at Supercomputing as part of a birds of a feather session focused on software engineering and reuse in computational science and engineering. I encourage you to take a look at other discussions and topics 
uh, through the link posted here because many people throughout the international community are focused on issues in software engineering and reuse. Very important topics, very important groups. So this is a great pointer um, for, for people who may want to get involved further in some of those activities. As I mentioned, we're seeking contributions from the broad computational science community. And by that, I mean we're looking for researchers, practitioners, stakeholders from all walks of uh, all, all types of employers, national labs, academic institutions, and industry. This is not a particularly a, a restriction uh, to participation just by the people who started the project. That is, we want the project to grow organically, and we encourage contributions from throughout the, the community to build a vibrant site. So we are looking for people who would like to not only provide content, but also who might want to work with us to help uh, with our curating and uh, editing of contributions that, that come to the site. So this activity is an initiative of the IDEAS Software Productivity Project. Originally, we have been funded through the Department of Energy's Office of Advanced Scientific Computing Research. And we also are now transitioning to have some support through the Department of Energy's Exascale Computing Project. We especially thank our program managers in the Department of Energy in our original ideas project for their encouragement to do this to do this work. They, we especially thank Thomas Nagus Fetter, Paul Baer, and, and David Lesner for their support. This slide shows a partial screenshot on the home page of the site. We'll look at that live a little bit later in the webinar. But basically, you can see that the content on the site is broadly categorized in six main areas, where we're looking about issues across the full spectrum from when you begin to plan projects uh, through developing those projects and, test and testing, uh, through working on improving performance, and possibly collaborating with other people. And at the same time, building individual skills for individual contributors as people are working on projects. So we find quite a broad range of content. This slide shows that the breakdown of topics among these broad categories. So in each category, there are places for information that range from topics such as say in planning, uh, looking at software requirements and design and interoperability through development, which would include looking at issues in documentation, version control, configuration and build, deployment, issue tracking, refactoring, software engineering, development tools. And then moving on to other areas, we look uh, at issues in performance, reliability, including testing and debugging. Um, and also issues in collaboration, which span throughout licensing um, and other sorts of organizations, programs, projects, funding, right, and whatnot. So the topics here are intended to be a broad categorization. Uh, and certainly over time, as our community content grows and expands, we can expect that these topics might expand and, and change over time. But the intent is that anything that is relevant to work in the broad sense in scientific software, productivity and sustainability, should be able to, to find a home on the site and we'd like to communicate about that. The next page shows, is, shows two resource examples on the site that are in the, the type of content that we call curated content. And by that, we mean that on our particular site, a contributor would write a very brief article that highlights existing external content. So this is a great opportunity for those of you who have favorite resources that you use in your own work uh, or favorite articles that you have read in journals, favorite books. This would be a great place for you as a contributor to write a short paragraph explaining why that material is relevant for computational science and engineering, why other people in the community might enjoy reading this or, or using the tool, and add that to our, our GitHub repository as curated content, uh, which would then point to, to the external resource 
So here are two examples. One focuses on an introduction to software licensing. This is, um, provides a pointer to a tutorial, which includes written um, content in the form of, of PDF file or slides, as well as recorded content. Um, but the key point here is that the curated part on our site is really just the short paragraph that points to that external content. Likewise, here's another bit of curated content that points to uh, external content for productivity and sustainability improvement planning. So the key aspect of that uh, for our site is just the, the short descriptive term here, paragraph here that points to the external resource. I'll mention that we have a vision of the site being useful to sub-communities within the broader scope of computational science. As we know, there are many, many of us who come together to collaborate uh, in different subspecialties and disciplines. List here on the, the left side of the slide are just a few of those for which we have already created community landing pages. And these are intended to be places that can be tailored for particular subgroups to share their unique perspectives and priorities and where we can provide a starting point for those groups of people who who want to focus on, on that aspect of work. Here's an example on the right side of the slide that shows a community for the environmental system science researchers. These are some of our collaborators uh, in, in a project where they are specifically interested in having their teams work on planning for better software using the, the PSIP tools that I mentioned on the last slide. And so consequently, this community landing page has been useful to their group because it's a, it's a place where they can easily point their group as a starting point here where um, it's clear the point, of, it's the point of focus and can be customized and further extended as that group needs, as well as giving the group a, a, a launching point to explore other resources on the site. So we encourage any of you who might be interested in creating a, a community-specific landing page for, for a sub, subset of, of your community, please let us know. The current status of the site is that we have a, a sampling of resources, but as, as you'll see, if you begin exploring, you'll notice that we have really just begun to scratch the surface. So many topics still need content in, in many important areas of work throughout scientific software. And we consider the current site to be a, a starting point for engaging anybody who would like to share their experiences, ideas, and pointers um, to, to be welcome to contribute information. Our goal over time is to build up rich content. And, and through that, uh, we'll, we'll really be eager to, to work with you uh, to, to encourage your, your sharing of information. On the right side of, of this slide, you can see that at, for the people who contribute to the site, we, we want to acknowledge your work. And in our contributors, our contributors page, we feature GitHub profile links and pictures for everyone who, has, who contributes to the site. And each resource, of course, is credited to the person who contributes to the site. So this would be a way to uh, share, share your perspectives and ideas. We're seeking a broad range of types of content. We talked uh, a few slides ago about curated content, that is, briefly pointing to existing external material. And that's, that's a great, uh, fairly easy, quick type of, of content contribution to make. We're also looking for content where people might want to delve a little more deeply into creating some new material specifically for this site. In particular, we're looking for documents that define concepts and terms in a particular area. We call those what is documents. We have some existing what is content on the site, but there's certainly a need for, for much more in, in terms of spanning the full range of topics of interest. We also are seeking how-to documents. Those are documents that describe a particular process for improving or working on some aspect of software. We have some in place, for example, for testing, 
documentation, configuration of builds, and a few other areas. But there's a whole lot of additional material that would be beneficial to share among our community. So if you have an interest in working on that and, and sharing that, please do let us know. We're also looking for articles uh, that, that summarize original experiences in some aspects of software in, in science or research. So uh, if you would like to write about your own experiences in your project in using particular sets of tools or strategies, that would be very much valuable uh, to our community. Um, and in addition, we're seeking blog articles, which are concise ways to communicate about particular, particular topics in scientific software. We will be launching a regular blog series. So far, our blog articles have just focused on the site launch. But over time, we will be soliciting input from thought leaders throughout the community. And we encourage anyone who would like to consider contributing a blog article to, to let us know. Send us a note and let us know what you propose to say. Also, the site can publicize events. Uh, and we encourage people who may be organizing or attending events related to improving scientific software to post those on the site to share them in the community, with the community. So key points about the scope for material are indicated on the right side of this slide. Basically, we're looking for material that shares general perspectives that are of interest to the broad computational science community that can be widely used. Uh, we are looking for material that specifically connects to issues in computational science and engineering and also data analytics as connected to scientific computing. It's important to show in your contribu contribution how whatever your information you're sharing would be relevant to, to a broad set of people. This slide is a diagram that shows how our site architecture promotes community collaboration by using as a back end GitHub as a place where content is created and refined uh, and then packaged uh, for display on the front end, which is developed using Ruby on Rails. You also see this diagram talks about, in some cases, using other technology like Google Docs in particular for some of our collaborative work on, on documents in order to promote very quick multi-user typing and suggestions and comments during, um, during writing. And then when, comment, when content stabilizes, uh, we then often move it into GitHub for, for moving forward. And then sharing that in the front end on Ruby on Rails. Our work on the site has been a collaboration where our team who are science, scientists and researchers ha have a site vision, and we've collaborated with Sandbox Studio, who are a interactive design and branding web development firm based in Chicago, who helped us in figuring out the details of how to execute you know, developing the site. And we've also partnered with Parallactic Consulting on developing the front end Ruby on Rails, uh, which employs a custom content management system that they developed for integration with GitHub. So this has been a very productive and fun partnership. And uh, we're excited about what this has enabled us to achieve. We're, we're excited because we believe this is a foundation for many people to share information about their work and what they believe is important for scientific software. This slide shows that there are two ways for people to communicate with us about contributing to the site. Um, and it's possible to just directly get started through GitHub. We'll show that in the next few slides. And also, it's possible to communicate just by sending comments if you prefer to do that. This hey, Melissa, well, I wonder if we should just pause here for just a second. And ask. Sure. Uh, I haven't seen anything in chat, but just a reminder: you can ask questions during chat or in the Google Doc. So I'll, um, I'll pause for one second and see 
Okay. I don't think anybody's writing anything, Lois, so I'll let you get back to it. Sure. This slide is a screenshot of the GitHub repository, in particular the, the file, a file called readme.md. Uh, and this is the place to begin when you might be starting to develop some content. At the bottom of this slide, you see the, the location of the, the GitHub repository. So if you have access to the PDF file of this, con of this content, uh, the, the hyperlinks are all out there. You can just click and go there. So when getting started, a key point is to think about uh, which types of editing you prefer to do. As, as circled in the um, red circle here, you see it's possible to edit through a web browser or by cloning and forking. And um, as you move ahead, uh, you'll want to remember to, to look at our style guides and information on what to contribute and how to contribute. We'll, we'll show that in the, the next few steps. So before we move on to do some demonstrations using the web, the web browser, we'd like to also mention that we are launching a Better Scientific Software Fellowship Program. The goal of this program is to foster and promote practices and tools and work related to software productivity and sustainability for science. The application process includes a proposal to fund a particular activity that focuses on improving scientific software. And we will select three fellows annually. Our first timeline for our first annual fellowship um, process is beginning now. We will have a question and answer session next next week on December 12th. So if anyone is interested in uh, following up with specific questions about the application process, we encourage you to attend that Q&A session. Otherwise, you can just look online for details. We're specifically seeking people for the Better Scientific Software Fellowship Program who are really passionate in sharing their uh, their insights about scientific software and communicating with the broader community. The key points of the fellowship application process are shown in the right side of the slide. That is, we ask potential candidates to describe what their experience is relative to scientific software and why they're interested in participating in this fellowship program, and then to briefly describe what, what they might like to propose to do. Uh, where activities could include creating content for tutorials or online resources. Um, really, there's a, a broad range of creative ways one could communicate about scientific software. So we're really excited to encourage uh, people interested in this to think, think um, in a broad way about what types of content you might enjoy to, to create and to share and how, how we might achieve broad impact through that. OK, this is a natural point to, to stop to address any questions you might have. Um, next, we'll move on to just show some screenshots from some active work on the front end and the back, back end as well. So uh, Lois, David helped to address this question, but just so you know it was asked, um, we did have a question about um, whether or not we had plans for a Slack or IRC channel or an online forum? That's a great question. Um, we have generally been encouraging people to use Computational Science Stack Exchange as a place for discussion of computational science software related issues in general. Um, there will be, th this site does support the ability for people to comment on blog posts already using the discuss mechanism. And we don't currently support the ability for commenting on particular resources. So at the moment, uh, we would welcome people's input on what kinds of resources you would find useful uh, so that we can think as a, as a broader community how to leverage our and combine our efforts. Thank you, Lois. Sure. All right. 
I will um, transition now to share the browser. Okay, I am now sharing my Firefox browser, which is showing the homepage of the website. Can you see that clearly? Can someone let me know if you, if you can see this clearly? Yeah, somebody said yes. yes Thank please. you. Okay, so the homepage here uh, shows that uh, there is generally going to be an announcement bar that's at the top indicating any particular areas where we want to draw your attention. Right now, that announcement bar is pointing to a blog announcement for our fellowship program. So we encourage you to take a look not only at the fellowship program, but in general, keep an eye on that announcement bar. Um, the site in general is structured so that uh, on the main page, you can see our breakdown of content across six broad areas. You can um, go to those areas directly. Um, you can also search for content using several other means. So right now I'm going to demonstrate searching just using the conventional search mechanism here. Um, we'll look for licensing, which is one of the examples shown on the prior slide. Um, and here we see a number of resources showing up. I'm just clicking here on an introduction to software licensing, which is the curated content resource that we discussed previously. So that's one way to find that through a conventional search. I'll also show searching um, by looking through particular topics. So for example, if we clicked on better planning, um, that would lead us to a site with information about planning resources. And this brings us to information about the productivity and sustainability improvement planning tools that we talked about. So when you get a chance, I encourage you to explore on, on your own. Um, you can see that we do have a, a good starting point for some resources, but certainly much more work needs to be done in order to build up the content of the site to be um, broadly representative of the issues that are important for scientific software. So that is all for the front end um, walkthrough. Now I'm going to transition to show you the GitHub site um, on the back end. So this is now showing up in, in my browser. If you if you go to our Better Scientific Software Organization, you'll see there are a couple different repositories here. The particular one is the Better Scientific Software.GitHub.io site, where we have information um, that feeds into content for the site. And the natural place to start when you go there is to look at our README file, um, where this points out information about where you would want to get started when you're contributing content. So I'm just going to click now on our what to contribute information. This is all on the back end of the site, distinct from the front end. Um, and you'll see here this describes the different types of content that we're seeking. This is what we talked about previously in the webinar, where we're considering various sorts of documents, um, as well as curated links and events. And so the first thing you might want to do if you're interested in contributing is determine what type of material you would like to provide. And, and then also think about the content scope. Um, you would want to think about um, making sure that your material would be of broad interest uh, to the computational science and engineering community uh, and connected uh, to topics that, that have broad, broad in, impact and interest. So we're not looking for content that's very narrow and focused on a particular 
subcommunity, um, but really looking for material that would be of interest to a broad range of people. So once you decide that there's something that you might want to contribute, then you can follow the guidelines in our How to Contribute page, which are shown here. So the first step would be, before creating your content, um, open a GitHub issue, go to our GitHub issues page, you can see the link here, and create a new issue to propose your idea. So you can see here on the right, there's a button called do issue. Um, and I'll say I want to write a curated article about um, King of Kings concepts. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, and submit an issue request. Um, and here, ideally, you would provide more information in your issue request than I, than I did here. You'd want to explain the point of the article that, that you're actually wanting to work on. Um, and then going back to our how-to um, document. Let's find that again. Um, you would have a, a dialogue through that issue uh, with the curators of the site who would provide feedback and then you would come to agreement on moving ahead with your with your article. So as a next step, then you would move ahead to create your content. And a very simple way to do this, uh, often the preferred approach is using the web web-based interface to GitHub. Um, you can also, of course, clone or fork the repository locally, and, and some people prefer that. But if we just go to the, the web-based interface, what we suggest that you then do is find an article that is of a similar type to the kind that you would like to contribute. So in this case, I want to contribute an article that, that I know is similar to a, an existing article about collaboration with high-performing teams at Google. And I'm looking here at an existing article um, that has that format. So I, I go to this existing article, and I'm going to consider it as a starting point for my new article. Um, alternatively, I should mention that there is another generic starting point for curated articles. Uh, the slide that uh, we provided and include this information. It's called Resource Template Basics. So that's another place to start. But wherever you do start, look at the raw format of the article. Now I'm showing that here. And that shows you what the markdown text looks like in raw mode. So in particular, this shows you not only um, what the content is that you're providing, but it also shows you metadata in the file that is used to construct the front end website. So it'll be important for your contribution to use appropriate metadata. And this would be a good time when you're creating your contribution also to go back to the style guide for the site uh, for more specific details about metadata. We won't discuss that in detail right now, but um, that would be an action to go back if you're actually creating Content. Last, before you get too much further, we had a question back on. Um, so, how did you get GitHub to auto populate the title with, you know, write a curated article about, or was that something you'd previously you know typed? You I, I previously typed that in, and uh, so that I didn't realize that I had that already in place. So, generally, you would have a blank there, and you would need to type whatever information you want to provide. Thank you. Sure. OK, so our next step is to then, whoops, I um, intended to copy that information, but I did not. So I'm, I'm going back to this raw mode 
So I'm highlighting it and copying it as my starting point. Um, and then I'm going back to the curated content space and I'm creating a new file. And in the new file, I um, write whatever I want to write. So typically I would, would use that text as a, as a starting point that I just copied and then change it to be whatever I want it to be. So in this case, um, I'm cutting and pasting from some other existing material that I have uh, about a new document called Team of Teams. And adding that to the, to the site. Um, very handy to preview what you've added. Um, and here I'm just clicking on the preview file so you can see the material for the new resource and, and how, it, how it looks in Markdown. This is the material that Mike Rue put together. And um, I'm going back to my new file. And what I'm going to do is commit this as a contributor in, in a new branch, um, not directly to the master branch. Um, so I click on this green button to propose a new file and um, then move, move ahead uh, to, to propose a file and, and create a pull request. And so what that will happen then, what will happen then is uh, the curators of the site will be notified about your new file, and then they will, will con consider uh, approval. Um, actually, what I, what I should have done but neglected to do was include a summary uh, in the comments line about my contribution and a, a more extended comment. So please be sure to include comments. In. In your, in your new commit so that we understand what's happening and, and how to communicate. So then the, the next part of the process that, that happens is the, the team of uh, content editors and curators will look at your material and um, perhaps provide some comments about uh, style changes or any content feedback. Uh, and then that material then will eventually be merged into our master branch. And once that happens, uh, it's then, so you can see here is our current list of, of resources. And um, the team of teams material, when it's approved and gets back into the master branch, will show up here alphabetically. It's not, it's not there quite yet. So, so then this file, after it's approved and in the repository, will be automatically rendered on, on the front end. Um, and so when we go back to the software site, uh, we could then find that material by looking um, at material for, in this case, better collaboration. So it's not going to be here now when I look at it, um, but other, other resources are there. And so once it's added, you can, can search for it. So that is uh, the end of the demonstration part of this webinar. And I would be glad to take any questions that you might have at this point. What, one thing I should say is the slides that you receive uh, include information about this process, the annotated comments to screenshots from the GitHub repository. So that's a good reference to, uh, to look at. Hey, Lewis, we do have um, a couple of questions. So sure. the first, are you looking for articles with original content or articles that leverage existing material? That's a great question. And uh, the short answer is we're looking for both, uh, de depending upon what makes sense for particular circumstances. So the curated content is intended to be a simple way to point to existing external resources very concisely. Um, however, there may be value in some cases to create new content that draws from existing external content, but frames issues in, in a more concise, targeted way for this 
audience in your site, and, and those kinds of contributions are also very much welcome. Those would be in the form of articles rather than curated content. Any further questions? Um, yes, we have another one. Um, this one may be a harder, at least I know it's, it's, it's generally a hard problem, but how are you going to handle information that may change or decay, becomes less relevant, becomes incorrect over time? Um, That's a great question, and that is indeed uh, something that, that we're, we're considering. Um, we are working with our site developers to make sure that, that we um, are automatically notified about, uh, to be sure that we look at resources uh, regularly to uh, be sure to update these as need be. Uh, because certainly, as, as the questioner points out, information about software is constantly changing. So that will be part of our, our organizational workflow. And um, we certainly welcome input and feedback from people who might be interested in, in helping us with some of, some of that. So that's all the questions I believe we have in uh, chat. Um, is there anything else? We still have a couple minutes uh, scheduled for this webinar. You're welcome to take yourself off mute if you want to ask Lois your question directly. Um, if if not, well, mm, there's some other things coming in. I just want to make sure it's not a question. Um, all right, so because of ECP, there are certain scientific software topics that are very pressing and timely. What is the correct communication mechanism to raise awareness of particular topics that are, that are of interest? In other words, can we vote on a GitHub issue? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would encourage you to feel free to vote on a GitHub issue or also send um, your perspective and comments, communicate. Um, with us through, through other means. Um, over time, we, we need to refine our process for uh, being sure to get feedback uh, about proposed topics and whatnot. So, so more specific guidance will be coming, but in the meantime, we encourage you to communicate through, through voting or other, other means. Always, I would add that this, you know, suggestions for webinars are also welcome. Absolutely. That's We're exactly what I was going to say, Ozzy. We definitely would love to hear those recommendations. We're always seeking content, both in the form of, of written material and, and new, new material that's specifically targeted towards the webinar series. So then I think with that, I can share my screen here. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for participating in this uh, webinar, which was the last one of the series, the 2017 series. And we are, we already have a number of topics listed for the 2018 series that's going to start uh, in January or February timeframe.